Adon Motswaledi has made a commitment to amend South Africa's tobacco legislation of 2005. Motswaledi says while South Africa was one of the first countries to legislate against tobacco, it has also lagged behind. He was speaking during the 17th World Conference on Tobacco and Health currently underway in Cape Town. Seven million people around the world die annually as a result of tobacco use. Some 2,000 delegates and representatives from over 100 countries are attending the conference. It's the first time the conference is held on African soil, and South Africa is ready to forge ahead. The Minister of Health announced that the amendment of the tobacco legislation is in the pipeline. When the legislation was passed in 2005, we compromised because there was a lot of resistance that in public places will give to 25% of the space for smokers. We're going to abolish that. There should be no space at all in any public hospital. And, and it's in the pipeline. We are also committed to plain packaging of tobacco products in order to reduce the product's appeal to young people. We are definitely going to amend the legislation to that. We are also committed to regulating all tobacco and nicotine products in the legislation, there's an argument that we did not include other nicotine delivery systems other than cigarettes only, and, and there are many other, including electronic systems. We need to control those. Delegates here agree that tobacco control around the world is at a crossroads. While there have been achievements, more still needs to be done in developing countries. Delegates argue that the tobacco industry is just about profits. With Africa having the youngest population in the world, they have become targets. Today there are parts of this world that are smoke-free that we never in a million years would have thought could have happened. But uh, the bottom line is we've saved our calculations, say something like 35 million lives in the last decade. And that's an awful lot of people. Uh, but there's an awful lot more to do. And as we know, the tobacco companies are doing everything they can to circumvent our efforts. Uh, to um, find ways to keep people addicted to nicotine and to keep selling a product that they know and we know is deadly and kills people. And shame on us for not doing more. But uh, thanks to the people here and those who are getting an award tonight, there are countries that really are doing something. The sad part now is the awareness and uh, the progress is better felt in high-income countries and the tobacco industry is moving towards low and middle income countries and targeting low and middle income countries as as uh, market and we have to be uh, also targeting those areas that are being targeted by the industry the next few days will be a roadmap for tobacco control around the world robust discussions and formulating strategies at a country and global level will be the top agenda. Nomawe Tusolwande, SABC News, Cape Town. All right, well, let's get more on that story with our reporter, Gloria Sifago Musi, who's out in Cape Town. Gloria, it's a very good afternoon to you. Look, tobacco is a major revenue earner for some countries and at the very same time a major killer. How are the delegates there balancing this and also trying to find ways to even look at maybe getting people to stop smoking? Good afternoon, Alicia. Well, throughout today, we've heard that um, tobacco use is actually one of the leading killers. Um, one of the leading killers in terms of premature deaths throughout the world. It kills about 7 million people every year. So we've heard that... Um, 80% of these people are in the developing world and if nothing is done about it, um, there will be about a billion people that are killed by tobacco related diseases by 2030. Well, earlier I spoke to Dr. Mark Paraskandola from the United States um, Institute for Cancer Research. I began by asking him of a study that his institute has done um, that is on the economic impact of tobacco use. Let's hear what he said to say. Well, I think it's important to recognize that uh, along with the health effects of tobacco use, tobacco use also has impacts on the economy because it 
costs, it's very expensive to treat all the diseases related to tobacco use. Uh, people are, uh, when they're ill, they're not working. Um, uh, their families have to take time off of work to take care of them. Or if someone who's the family uh, breadwinner, you know, the money earner is home sick or dies early, then uh, the family uh, finances are, are hurt because of that. So we estimate that the uh, globally, tobacco use causes over a trillion dollars in uh, economic damage worldwide uh, each year. Which policies are effective in reducing the use of tobacco? Well, uh, so there are um, s several key tools we have uh, to reduce tobacco use. Um, uh, uh, one of the most effective uh, tools that has been used in many countries is simply raising the price of tobacco products uh, to make it more expensive. Uh, it, that particularly uh, is effective in preventing kids from smoking because they generally don't have a lot of uh, you know, free money to spend on, on, on tobacco products. Um, of course, informing people about the harms of tobacco smoke, uh, particularly through the putting graphic images on cigarette packages and, and other kinds of communications. And then also uh, important are restrictions on smoking in public spaces to protect people from secondhand smoke, but it also creates a kind of a, a different social norm around smoking where people get the idea that smoking is not something that's you know, acceptable uh, uh, to do and it, it, it becomes uh, you know, seen in a more negative way. South Africa has many of those policies that you just mentioned, but it does not seem to be helping. People are still smoking. What else can be done? What, what are you hoping this conference will come up with that uh, can help towards this? Well, I think uh, one of the most important things is, you know, it's one thing to have a, a, a policy or a law on the books, um, but it also has to be effectively implemented. And so I think a lot of the discussions at the conference here are looking into how do we make sure that uh, policies are affected in a way, are implemented in a way that they really are effective. Um, and, uh, you know, that is going to take some, some more research. Um, and then also I think, uh, you know, we're finding um, in many countries, uh, uh, tobacco control policies may um, be effective for certain segment of the population but not as effective for others. So particularly we see tobacco use tends to be high among lower income segments of the population. So we're trying to find ways to reach those people who have not been, uh, where we've not been as successful as yet. Would you say tobacco use would lead to more experimenting with uh, harder drugs? Well it, it can. Um, it, that's uh, not necessarily the case, but we do see that tobacco use tends to, uh, especially in young people, tends to cluster with other behaviors. Kids who smoke may be more likely to, to drink alcohol and um, uh, engage in other risky behaviors as well. Um, but that's, I, I think, an area we want to uh, understand more. How do we um, uh, sort of intervene not only in tobacco use, but also around those other risk behaviors, uh, you know, particularly for youth? We've heard that in the, develop, in the developed world uh, that um, people that smoke, the numbers have, se have seemingly gone down, but uh, we're seeing an increase in Africa. What, what's, why, what is that about? Yeah. Well, we have seen um, a decrease in tobacco use, particularly in a number of the high-income countries where tobacco use has been prevalent for a long time in the U.S. and U.K. and Europe and, um, and Australia. Uh, but these are um, countries where there has been an active sort of uh, tobacco control activity for many years now and we're finally starting to see the effects of that. In Africa I think we're still just getting started in tobacco control. Um, but the real opportunity in Africa is smoking prevalence is still relatively low compared with uh, other parts of the world. So there's an opportunity to prevent the kind of epidemic here that we've seen uh, you know, elsewhere. Well, Alicia, later on this evening, there will be an award ceremony where NGOs from across the globe uh, that are working on keeping the use of tobacco will be honored for the work they do. It's back to you, Alicia. So much to our reporter there, Gloria Sifakomusi, live to us from the 17th World Summit on Tobacco and Health that is currently taking place in Cape Town. Here's the latest within an hour, and I'll see you on top of the hour.